Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. There we are. There it is. Yeah, it's that five second delay. That is why. Nice. I don't know. You hit There's that five second right. delay. But I, I did put you up first, John. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. And that was that. So big, big, look at everybody. Look at all these people we have waiting. Oh, look at it. Big waiting, tonight. waiting to get into the show. How about that? They must but before we go to them, let's they tell must. everybody that our sponsor for this show is Seacoast RV on Route 1 in Saco, Maine. And they are... Not our new sponsor anymore. They're our sponsor. And they're right on Route 1. They're in Saco. They're the number one crop park model dealer in the United States and the number one elevation park model dealer in the United States as well. And they have the full lineup of Winnebago, Class B, Class C, and some selected towable models. So with that being said, we want to thank them. And let you know that they also have propane. And I just got some a couple weeks ago. Yep. And they have the coolest dogs, Bob. They have the coolest yes, dogs. Do. They have all three black all, ones and, and a golden one. All four Speaking of, of dogs, there's Audrey Foley Egan. Not because she's a dog, but she has <laughs> dogs as well. Yeah, you better watch Audrey. that. I hope it's <laughs> the right way. Dante's on. Let's start up top, Tsugami. I ran into Dante when I was down at uh, Seacoast the other day. Ah. He was picking up some things, and guess guess what? He's he's even thinking about trading in the gas motor home for a diesel pusher. So wow, he's he's liking life. Yeah. I think I bu- I think I bumped into him on open house day when when he ate three bags of kettle corn. All right, Don Hawes is headed back to Texas on Monday. Steve, good evening. Jim Convoy, New England Ivory Roof. Silver Moose Restorations is in the house. Jerry's Jerry's a little bit late. He was beat out there today. Yeah. Evening from the Red Apple Campground in Kennebunk Port. A nice campground. And I got to tell, while Jerry's on, I got to tell him this funny story. On, on Tuesday, I was down at Majors. Now, Majors is closed Sunday and closed Monday. Right. Now, <clears throat> because of Memorial Labor Day, they were closed Tuesday as well. But I pulled into the lot, and there were five motorhomes backed into the customer spaces out front. So there must be people that had trouble. One was from New Jersey, one was from Iowa, and blah 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 blah. And you know, we're just waiting for service when they opened. But I got on the phone because I wanted to go down to that auto camp place. So I'm yeah. on the phone and I was probably there for 15 minutes and there must have been 25 cars that pulled in, drove, people walked right up to the door and saw that they were closed on Tuesday. Wow. And my wife, this is funny. We should have showed the camera, but anyway, you know what? It's testimony to, to the service and the reputation that majors has. Yeah. So hey, yeah. good Susan and Jim. We're going to be bringing that up. Uh, they're in the lobby. And I'm going to bring them up around 7.10 or 7.15 because they've just returned from a 
a great trip out west. And we're going to talk to – this is going to be a, a preview of a show that we do with them. In a couple of weeks, we're going to do a full show because they had such an incredible trip. But I asked them they wanted to come on tonight for a little while and talk about those summer stories. And uh, they'll okay. be joining us in a while. Nagami, this was supposed to be our fall show, you know, as we swing from spring. Yeah, well, it, it does. It, I have both. We, we're going to have, uh, if I do this right, we're going to have summer stories. Right. Why is this so slow? Oh, there we go. Summer stories. Right. And we'll have some fall favorites. Depending right. on However, summer has stayed on at least through this weekend with 90 degree days, maybe 100 in Boston tomorrow. Well, it doesn't end till the 21st. So, it's, Well, it's, you know what? That is the technical part of it. But the, re, the reality part, especially right. when it comes to RVing, is that, way. you know, Labor Day is pretty much your last day. Because traditionally for the campgrounds, that's when the college kids back. Remember back when college kids used to work during the summer? Right. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. They would go back to school and then the campgrounds were short on staff. Right. Now they have people from all over the world working. But I'm wondering... For example, um, let's use Bailey's, for example, where they have so many activities. If losing their college kids is going to um, have an impact on it, only because of the fact that people are going to want to camp this weekend. They're going to well, want to. When, when, I talk, no, when I talked to Galen, he said he had uh, kids from Russia. Right. Jamaica. Detroit and Croatia. Like, so they're yeah. not bound by that. They're in on the V, what do they call the H1 visas? No, J1. Because they can't get college kids in Maine. J1. What's a, what, Tony, what are you doing in Iowa? You on your way back to New Mexico or from the Frog Rally? Or are you seeking out a brewery in Iowa to have another beer tonight? Okay. Let's ask Steve Hogan if the tow company ever showed up. He said he called him at 7 o'clock this morning to tow his truck. And at one o'clock this afternoon, the truck was still sitting in his yard. Um, uh, you know, so okay. Okay, we got Susan, Tony, okay, Maria. Okay, Good evening, guys. He's already at the Hershey show setting up units for next week's show. Oh, and Kevin is Kevin is there. Okay. No, he's, he's there. Yeah. Okay. And Audrey says, you, you don't, you don't hear my summer stories. You oh, don't want to hear. Out, I think she left out want. I think she meant you don't want to hear my summer yeah. stories. Well, well, you know what? She well, spent, of course we do, Audrey. She spent a lot of time on, along Route 128 on a Friday afternoon, I think six hours. When she started taking pictures, it was light out. When she got finished taking pictures, it was dark out. She had more were, problems again? Uh, a couple times this summer, she had ah. bad, big problems. All right. Swenson, problems. good evening all from Central Mass. Central Mass. For all, you heading back down here, Walter? Let me know. I just, uh, I broke the, I broke my speed record this last weekend. Oh, Audrey's going for a six-week trip south. Hey, everybody, if you want to hear about a crazy man, listen to what Zagami's going to tell you right now. I left uh, North, Northboro, Massachusetts at 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. Now, right. And it's dark at 7.30, folks. Yeah. And I arrived at our house in Naples at 9 o'clock Monday night, 9.30. 29 and a half hours on the road, and I drove 22 of the 29 and a half hours straight through a couple of naps in the rest areas, but uh, see how you do with that one, Mr. Swenson. I say he's nuts. What do you do guys I... think? Let me totally, ask you. Well, totally let's careful. ask our audience, Agami. Let's okay. ask our audience if they feel as though there are hazards driving at night on the interstates because of all the junk that falls off cars and especially off trucks and, and, Blowout tires and animals, et cetera, et cetera. Is it worth risking your life for a few hours? What do you I think, audience? Talk now. I didn't see any debris. There was nobody I on the road. Went over and didn't see it. Didn't see any deers, no buffaloes. It was the cleanest trip imaginable. <laughs> Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, 
Jimmy Keen. Now, that's bad. Jim, I was going to bring you up in the program. I don't know. I may have to change my mind there. I don't know what Don Hawes says. I, Walter Swenson. Yes, there are hazards, wild animals and tires. Well, I don't run into because I can see two miles ahead of me. That has such great eyes. Okay. okay. We are looking at 3 a.m. on Friday. That, is that arrival or is that departure? Walter? No, we're leaving. Well, we're leaving. We're leaving we at leaving. 3 a.m. on Friday. Now, Bob, at 6 o'clock, it's light. So he, yeah. Walter's going to spend half his time at Dunkin' Donuts making sure he gets a triple ripple macchiato special. Well, I, I did stop a couple of times at Duncan. Yeah. Okay. A couple of Starbucks, a couple of Dunkins. Yeah. Steve Hogan has got it right. Three, the 300 or 3 p.m., whatever comes first. No. Five hours be, max. I get behind the wheel and I get excited and I just keep driving. Yeah. Well, There's so there. many dead deer on the side of the road. I could make a fortune in rotten deer jerky. Yeah. Well, Tony, yeah, that, yeah, Tony I, if you got a I, roof rack, I, throw I, one on. You know, sometimes, sometimes other people draw these animals. See, when every time I drive with DePietro, he's worried about animals, and then we wind up seeing them. But see, I don't worry about the animals, so I, I didn't have any. Well, didn't... once you've hit one, you know you're a little bit more. Got a deer on ninety at night. Well, I went, this time I went drive at night. I went ninety five the whole way because there was no. Traffic and Monday was even better. I, you know, I flew through the George Washington Bridge at uh, let's see, about nine o'clock at night. <clears throat> Nobody going over the George Washington. The uh, Vince Lombardi rest area was maybe half full. I've never seen so few people. Yeah, yeah the I, drug dealers were taking the weekend off. They must. They must have. <laughs> hey, hey, folks. Charlie <laughs> Butler says, "Got a deer on ninety. Got a deer at." On 90 at night, thousands in damage, never drove at night since. Hey, let me, ask our, let me ask our audience another question. By the way, folks, I didn't say it at the start of the show. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, gotta, I, I have to find somebody in my favor. They're all There's naked. nobody that thinks what you so, did was intelligent. It's crazy, man. I'm afraid of the animals. It must be too stupid. Huh? Okay. Let me ask this question, or let me let me make this statement. Well, it's 714. I got to bring Jim and Susan up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. One, yeah. One Ladies and question. gentlemen. We do not take your viewing your viewership for granted. We appreciate it every Wednesday night when we hit that button at seven o'clock and there's a line of people waiting to watch our show. We appreciate it. We'll never take it for granted. However, let me ask you a question. Not yes. So like it and share it when you uh, have that opportunity. But what's the question I want to ask? Ah, oh, see that a simple flash of a picture on the screen in Deprito's brain goes dead. Oh, it takes less than that for my brain to go dead. My brain went dead long ago. Um, oh, I know. I know. I know what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this question. Um, when you're in your car and you're doing a long distance trip and you have to use public restrooms, do you say, oh, I wish we had the RV now? Okay. Or if you're traveling by airplane and they put 140 people into 130 passenger aircraft and you have to wait in line. And for some reason, TSA pre-check didn't show up. So you had to go with normal people. Oh, the pilot. You ever say, oh, I wish I had my RV. Just wondering if, if those are instances when you say like I do, oh, I should have taken the RV. Anyway, right. Jigami, you had something to say here. Jim, Jim and Susan, turn your camera on. I don't. I don't have anything. This is what I see on your slot. So you got a microphone. Where would that be? Up Where here. would the camera be? Yeah, Bottom left. I got a little switch up here. We, there we oh, are. Wait, there, there you go. Now, <laughs> wait a minute, Jim. Computer now, problems. Jim, were you two sitting in the dark? Oh, that's Jim. Just waiting. I had no Ooh. idea. Just waiting. Were you sitting in the dark, oh, John, hoping you could find the light switch? No, no there was no, a, no. there's a switch on the top of my laptop screen. Security, you know. Uh, just... Are you looking through a telephone? No, no my no, laptop. No, laptop. Can you lift it up so that you're looking straight at it instead of? There you go. Good. Yeah. Jim, that's the first time I haven't seen you in a first time I've seen you without a yellow shirt on. 
Well, I got some yeah. yellow. But yeah, I know, but what is that? It's supposed to glow in the dark. What yeah. is that? A radar detector? A, a no, no, no. we were in we were in Arco, Idaho. Yes, oh. it wasn't the highlight of our trip, but it was there. Before you jump, Jim, some people may not know that you are one of the most respected RV salesmen in New England. Really? You, you I didn't are, know that. <laughs> of, we didn't tell you that. We Jack no, didn't know no, that either. Something else. But explain. Thank you very much. Tell us where you worked and before, and then about your retirement and hopping out on the... Yeah, um, I've had four different careers. Uh, the most recent one was in the RV industry. I spent a uh, better part of 10 years selling RVs, one for the big, the big blue company that I don't like to talk about, and the other one with the most glorious years was for Chad Shepard at Pete's RV. Um, I walked into the dealership the day he purchased the Massachusetts store. I was his first hire. He never hires older, experienced people, but I was an exception. And uh, I had a great time there. I really enjoyed it. Um, met some really fantastic folks. Uh, got to know a lot of things about the RV industry. And as a result of that, we ended up purchasing for, as our retirement, a uh, Precept Prestige 36U, which is a 38-foot Class A motorhome. And we have been flogging the daylights out of that for the last two years. We've got 20,000 miles on it. And our most recent trip was the one that we're going to talk about a little bit. Well, well, Jim, you know, I give you nice. guys credit because the clock is ticking. I don't know if you'd agree with me, but when you, you know, I right have to some of you, you know, I <laughs> had to I had to start living what I was preaching because, uh, right. you know, tomorrow's never guaranteed. Don't wait for it. It's it's now or never. And, you know, of course, our good friend Jimmy Buffett, uh, he uh, he told us all about it. Everything, like Susan says, everything you need to know in life is in a Jimmy Buffett song. That's right. Yep. That's yep. right. So where are you speaking to us from right now? Three Field Street, Taunton, Mass. Oh, oh, you're back home. Yeah. Yes, we, we've been home for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, we, and we did um, a, um, still haven't got a haircut, but that's okay. No, that's tomorrow. We both so have you said you walked into the store and you were his first hire, and you said you don't normally hire. He doesn't normally, normally hires young people. You, and you, you would, said you were you his first older hire. Before. No, no, I never worked for Karen. Well, you didn't work. Oh, okay, I thought no. you did. Okay, so you came in right at the turnover. Yeah, the, the very day. I Actually, the, the lawyers pulled out and I pulled in. I was there to see uh, Reiny, uh, you know, yep. Reiny yep. and Greg. They were working there, and I was. Uh, I had left the business. I was done with it. I was up to here with it. And uh, after a couple of conversations with the folks at Pete's, I re-upped, and it was the best thing I ever did. Okay. Well, you were at the other I, store down I, in uh, Route 1. 107 or where oh, Marty's used to be. Route one. Oh, 140? The plane, the, where Marty's used to be. Yeah, 79 and 140. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Myrick, Myrick, yeah. Matt. Yeah, the old Nissan one. dealership. So, and so what did you do nice before that? Me? Oh, yeah. Um, I was a mechanical engineer. I was a software engineer. I had my own business and ended up in the RV industry. So, you know, like, um, like I used to tell my customers all the time, my knowledge is a mile wide, an inch deep. If it had been an, a mile deep and an inch wide, I'd be a rich man. Yeah, but it's kind of nice, Jim, to see somebody who's sold them for 10 years have enough confidence to go out there and buy it and actually live the life. Because yep. we know, and you, you know the stories too, there's, there's many people selling RVs who've never been in a campground, never mind being in an RV. They just happen right. to sell them for a living. So yeah. what you we, brought was real, real world experience. Yeah, we camped with our kids when they were little. I mean, I grew up camping. Jim, when they came, came here, they he grew up camping. Um, we had a pop up. We we drove the living daylights out of that with our three boys, and then they got to be teenagers. And I think it was a mutual decision that we didn't want to hang out with each other for a while. <laughs> Susan. What? What's it like spending 24 seven in 360 square feet with that man to your left? Um, it's not, it's, <laughs> <laughs> well, saying, it's not as bad as you thought. That's an easy no, question. No, Don't no, you no, no. It's, um, it's, let me it's think about good. that. It's been good. Um, we did end up, um, we basically pulled a Forrest Gump uh, the last week of our trip and just turned around and came home. <laughs> we had enough. We had enough. We had seen everything. We were kind of trying to figure out things to do in the Kentucky, West Virginia area. And then we said, uh, let's just go home. We can come back. Yeah. Now, what did you, are you planners? Like, did you have every second 
<laughs> laid out for a month or did you just say we're um, going yep, and he's the I engineer know bob you know no it was me it yeah was but if me. he's an engineer are you susan what is your background i'm i a little bit of everything i worked my last my last career was a um, corporate paralegal for state street bank in boston i ran i did a lot of their um corporate governance work there Okay, there you um, go. Office work. I had gone to nursing school when I first got into college and stuff, and we decided to, um, you know, kill that. Cool. And have so you're saying and... you were the detailed one, Susan? Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. To... Jim is you much have... more fly. Than... Jim, every day, planned, really planned next... morning, was really? doing this, afternoons. No, 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 no. Spots. No, we, we put our, you know, if you listen to the people that do the, uh, the content development, uh, we put our anchors down. We knew where we wanted to be and we estimated how long we wanted to be there and made arrangements to be there at that time and then kind of filled in the details for that area. So, you, I mean, you know, we were in 17 yeah. different states. We did um, six national parks, a whole bunch of monuments, a whole bunch of state parks. Um, it was a great trip. I mean, 7,200 miles on the motorhome, 4,800 miles on our toad, which is a Jeep Cherokee. So we did about 12,000 miles in just over eight weeks, almost nine weeks. And like, and I do like to drive. I'm not That's as crazy cool. as this man. I used to be 40 years ago, but not anymore. Yeah. But to your question, John, I did book everything as far as our stays um, well ahead of time. Did you um, find that that was mandatory? Um, or did I you don't find know. that you There are a couple that we get up in the middle of the night. I can't remember which one it was. Um, maybe Coulter Bay down in um, Teton, yeah. which was so worth it. But when we were making the plans a year ago, uh, the emphasis was on getting your reservations in because that was yeah. still in the midst of everything that was going on. Yeah. Uh, our experience on the road was that there were plenty of sites of, I don't know if they were available, but they the people weren't occupying them. Um, so I think we're seeing a drop off on the yeah. on the hundred percent occupancy. Yeah. Um, that's that's just an observation. That is not anything scientific. Yeah. I know KOA has some great numbers on that, um, but I okay. think we're going to start seeing more normalcy in getting campsites. I I liked doing it ahead of time because I mean I was I've been home for the last year be, while we were planning this trip. I retired last June, but um, I liked not having to think about that day in and day out where we're going to be mm -hmm. you know that was already taken care of we knew where we would be we knew the big bucket places we wanted and we'll talk about this on another day yeah. right. and a big a big plug for joel and harvest hosts oh, and yeah. boondockers welcome yeah uh i think we used eight boon uh eight harvest hosts of boondockers welcome uh we tried out a love stop and we also did one cracker barrel um, did you do the loves with the hookups yep. yes yes it's good what, very $40? good dollars it was 40 bucks. 46, yeah. 46, I 40 think. Bucks. Yeah, yeah, with the taxes and everything, it was like 46. Yeah. Full hookups. You had to uh, disconnect the toad. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. How many How many units at that place? Because I've stopped at one in Cleveland. Six. Okay. There, um, there's could another you hear one trucks has... coming all night long? Or could you no, the food? trucks. So you know how a Loves is typically set up. The front is gas and the back is diesel. Right. Um, so they set up these six sites in the gas uh, in front of the gas pumps closer to the street so yeah. it wasn't it wasn't horrible it was great it served the purpose um it was a night that was like between campsites so we filled it with the loves and it worked out great yeah so what would you guys say in the limited time we have left yeah. before zagami throws you off um <laughs> to the people that are watching the show right now saying you know maybe next year maybe in a couple years maybe yeah. blah 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 versus damn it do it now damn it do it now yeah it's you know um I, i've been preaching this for 10 years and yes to make a sale but also to work as a consultant y you know we don't get yesterday back we'll never get yesterday back and who knows if tomorrow's going to be as good as the day after that so right. you just you know we're, we're both 67 years old we've been retired for a year uh, we're putting miles on. We don't know how long this is going to last. We, you know, we hope it will last for a long time, but we're all just a heartbeat away. I was at the cardiologist yesterday. We're all just a heartbeat good. away. Good, though. Um, but everybody's story is different. 
you know, everybody's situation. It's not just, you know, older folks like us or young older folks like us. Young it's, older folks. Yeah. It's families. It's people that have multi-generational um, responsibilities. I mean, I still have that. Um, it's just you do you, but don't spend all your time just thinking about it. Do what you can. Yep. Do what you can. Um, you don't have to be fancy. I mean, we packed lunches. We had breakfast. In, oh, Jim doesn't eat breakfast. We had, you know, we ate meals in the in the coach. We ate some out. We ate outside. We did not scrimp. Yeah. You know, I must have been in six six quilt shops along the way, and had a blast. Um, T-shirts and stuff. Very little souvenirs. You know, because the kids don't think that's important anymore. Well, Big question. Was, Major was, question. What? Stop at any Bucky's? No. No. They weren't in this area. No, we, we, we didn't was. see them out west. Uh, we saw a couple under construction, but we didn't see any that were yeah, completed. Yeah. Yeah. So, and what was your route again? Um, what we did was we, we don't do New York City, Bob. Sorry. We're yeah. us not doing yeah. anything near the New York City. So yeah. we go 90, 84, yeah. Yeah, 84 to 81, 81 drop down to 80, 80 to Chicago. Then we picked up 90 into the uh, Montana, Wyoming area. And then we uh, we bebopped along the Continental Divide in the Rockies for a few weeks and ended up in Denver. And then we turned back and we came Route yeah. 70. 70, a little 80, south. 80, the northern one. No. We did the so, northern We didn't just. We did 70 to 80, yes. 70, did you yeah. stop at the RV Hall of Fame? We, yeah, uh, that that was, wasn't this trip. That was last trip. We were, in the, okay. we were out in the spring for a month and we went there. Okay. But Jim forgot to mention that what was my favorite state actually was South Dakota. Why, Why is that? We were in the Custer area, Custer State Park area for a week. And that was our longest stay in one place. And we did Badlands. No, we did before that, we did Badlands. And then we did Custer, everything around Custer. Rushmore, Sturgis. Every gravel, dirt road we could find, we drove, like, all the way up to Spearfish did, Canyon, did, across to... Um, did you meet Fishy you Gnome know, while you were Sorry? Was the motorcycle event going on when you were near? No, Star? we were no. there about two and a half weeks before they were just starting to get. It was a ghost town, <laughs> but you drove through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got we to see it. The silver antler. Had to go through yeah. and take a picture. The right. broken yeah. spoke. Yeah, the space was incredible. We've never been across the Mississippi before in our life driving. We've been to California. We've, we've flown, been, but we've but never no never in a done a road like trip this. west of the Mississippi. So wasn't that the trip from hell going from Gary, Indiana, over to? Uh, to, to way on the, the southern side of Chicago, wasn't that holy wasn't hell? That bad. That's that's pretty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can tolerate that. But when you get into Indiana and Illinois, what the heck is the speed limit? Oh, there's exactly. one for trucks, one for motorhomes, yeah. one for vehicles, one for nighttime driving. One yeah. of you, one of you've only got six wheels. One of you've got twelve wheels. Yeah. It's crazy. Plus, they still have the toll gates that. Uh, no, we didn't see any of those. No, they're gone. You didn't, you didn't, those in, uh, Indiana. You didn't pay fast enough to get hit, hit by one. No. <laughs> um, going back to your point about Jimmy Buffett and, and doing it yeah. now. Yeah, doing it. I think that was a. I think that was the thing that hit all the parrot heads come, when you woke up on Saturday morning and, oh, yeah. and realized that it was gone because it was just that figure that was going to be there for larger than life. Yeah. yeah, and he he yeah. would always be there. You never, even mm -hmm. though you know, we started to see indications that he was sick and and you know he was he was being treated for four years at dana fire yeah we yeah. ran into a bartender in cody okay. that was Wyoming. connected with him and Wyoming. he was part of the yeah yeah they had a personal relationship of some sort but um but he was talking about him being ill but anyway but yeah so that's our short story today um okay so we're, gonna, we're unpacked we're gonna... and we're packing up we will be in florida for the winter as of the beginning of november where are you going we're going to be down here we're going to be in summerfield which is just it's between ocala and the villages it's right next to believe That's it or not country, right yes mm -hmm. yeah. yes it's right next to a camping world uh, we have friends that live in the villages we stayed there last fall at this resort for a few days and we were at one that was farther out in the boondocks for about 10 days after that storm that went through. But um, yeah. but we ended up with this one. We, we, we dodged this home one. for Christmas for a little bit. I'm, I'm down at Del Webb, maybe. Here, so yeah, maybe. and Jim will come home yeah. for shows. Yeah, I'll be catching up with Horky in a couple of days, in a few, uh, a few days. Yeah. 
Are you working in Pennsylvania? Yeah. yeah oh, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do the show with Pete's. Yeah. We'll be do I'll be in the Jayco display motorized. Okay. We'll see and you there. I'll speak, just look for the yellow shirt. Speak the truth, Jim. You still got him. I'm going to. I always do. All right. That's the way to I'll do tell it. you what, one thing about it though is that I've learned is you know, selling them's one thing and, and listening to everybody's stories and getting all excited and, and you know, seeing the pictures of what people are doing. It's totally different when you do it yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were novices. <laughs> that is going to make you a better salesperson, will it not? Um, I think it will. Uh, awesome. At the end of the yeah. day, I think it will. You will. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, besides all of, besides the fact that a lot of the screws are too short for what they're trying to attach to. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that isn't that amazing? You know, it, if besides having you know waste management problems, that's one of the biggest complaints that they don't use long enough screws mm -hmm. or oh, the right screws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the right. I mean, you think, hey, that's a simple thing, <laughs> right? That's an easy fix. Look at the warranty money it would save. Yeah, exactly. God bless. She handled it. very well. She handled very well when we were traveling. We did our highest. Point on the road with her was 9,660 feet as we came in from Bighorn in the Black, from Big Horn in the Black Hills. The, um, the, we came in from the Black Hills to um, the east side of Yellowstone to get down to Teton. Did you, that was did you break area. down at all or have any roadside issues? <laughs> no, no, knock on wood. Um, we had a broken windshield. And Progressive Insurance was fantastic. We They arranged to have the windshield shipped to Denver when we were going to be there, and they installed it in Denver. That's great. Wow. That's, good. That's great. That's How'd you great. like going down those mountains uh, between Yellowstone and um, Salt Lake, or did you? Did we you didn't get to Salt Lake. Because, no, no, we not Salt Lake. We, we did. Um, we, we were in the Rockies. Just um, Denver. Yeah, there's a certain pucker effect there, but you know, you get used to it. I mean, you're, you're driving a gas unit, right? Correct. Right, so you could only downshift a little enough. Oh no, you'd be surprised. These new transmissions are incredible. Yeah. Incre I've driven hundreds of motorhomes over my career, and uh, this new six-speed and the V8 Godzilla—it's—it's it's a great combination. Really? It's a great combination. Well, it's said, still on a diesel. I'm not going to take that away from the diesel folks, but yeah. you know what? It does the job. Susan, you should um, apply for a job at Pete's. And uh, <laughs> you know, just hey, we just spent we just spent two months together. <laughs> no, he, we yeah. thought about it because we're we're leaving tomorrow to go to a wedding down the Poconos. Um, Jim's nephew's getting married, and um, but he's gonna, we're going to come home first, and then he'll go down to um, down to Hershey. Uh, we we were supposed to be out until like this past weekend, but like I said, we got home sooner, and we had thought about just coming up to Pennsylvania, hanging out in the Poconos going to the wedding and then heading back to Hershey and hanging out there. In fact, yeah. some of the staff, some of the administrative staff there that we've got, I've gotten to know as well. So yeah, I'll put you to work, but I'm glad to be home. <laughs> I'm glad to be home. I'm all right. So, so pick out all your pictures and we'll have yeah. you back yeah. on within a month. Glad okay. to see you had a, a wonderful time. Yeah. And, Great. Uh, yeah. Drop well, it down. Catch up with us. Catch yeah. up with us in the meantime. You know, send me a message and let me yeah. know what you're expecting. We'll, we'll, pick, we'll pick a date. A okay. Definitely be Wednesday night. We'll pick a date. Yeah, sounds good. It. So you, so you, have, you have to go back and we want you you're wearing a yellow shirt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To, to, to the audience now as we get into our. Okay. And if anybody's going to be in Hershey, please stop by and say hello. Huh? I'm just saying, if anybody's going to be at the Hershey show, please stop by and say hello. I'd love Absolutely. to chat. Go see, go see Jim at Pete's. Yeah. Okay. And if you're All buying, right. definitely come see me. <laughs> All right. Take care. Yeah, Thank do. you very much. Thanks. Bye, guys. That just brings us right up to the um, time where we need a commercial for our friends. We at do. Let's, let's, let's Seacoast RV. Uh, let's do Brit. Uh, no. All right. Our sponsor is Seacoast RVs, and I'm with Kendra Smith here today. And Kendra, talk about service in an RV dealership and why it's so important. Service after the sale is a huge, huge deal. You have to make sure that if there's anything that you need addressed while you're planning on going on your trip or when you're actually on your trip and something unfortunately happens, you need to know that you have somebody that will back you and, and take good care of you after the sale. How about, how about preventive maintenance, having customers come back at a regular time? Because RVs are 
unique, they're handmade, you know, it's like driving your house down the road. So how do you instruct the customers on what their responsibilities are on preventive maintenance and what you can do for them if they're not talented enough or just don't want to tackle it? Well, I mean, beyond the spring opens or your winterizations, which obviously winterizations are extremely important, um, we, we help with resealing roofs, we help with greasing uh, and uh, servicing wheel services. Um, we do a lot of that kind of maintenance stuff, checking your tires, things of that nature, just making sure that you're ready to go or that you're, that you're prepared for next season, mm -hmm. basically. And for the do-it-yourselfers, you've got one of the largest parts and accessory stores in, certainly in Maine and, uh, and on the East Coast. So talk about what they can find here to do these jobs themselves. They can find everything here. And if they, <laughs> if they can't find it here, we can order it for them for sure. All right. Kendra, thanks very much and appreciate your sponsorship of the show. Anytime. All right. We are back. Uh, let's let's check quickly. I want to make sure we didn't leave any stories on the table here. Oh, there was some good stuff here. Let's go way back to... Um, oh, time? Randall's here. What time? Randall we'll Murray back. at 722. But go back... To Corky, seven fourteen. Um, wait, wait a minute. I'll just actually question. actually go back before that, man. Yeah, yeah, to Maria. Look at Maria forward. at seven fourteen. At, okay, I'll get there. September trip until we leave October first for a six week trip south. All right, maybe we'll catch up with you when you're south. Tony, I asked him why he stayed in Iowa. On our way home and stopped at Amana Colonies, where they have a brewery. Well, what a surprise, Tony. All right, we are heading down on Friday, and we'll be making the drive nonstop. That a boy, Walter. I'm glad, I'm glad a couple of us couple of us still have that youthful vigor in us. Yeah, you and, call it youthful vigor. Most of our audience calls it something different. Well, as I told you the last time, when I told my cardiologist, the last time I did this, he said, you know, that's what kids used to do when they were 19. 79 year old guys are not supposed to be able to do that. But I wanted to prove them wrong, so I did it a second time. And a third. <clears throat> well, two really, two deliberate ones, and then a third one. Huh. What we got for Charlie, evening from Oswego, New York. Charlie, aren't you from Indiana? Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Audrey, what's she talking about there? What time was what's that? One of our stories, but I don't know which one. Six and a half. talking about you, you make a nice drive. On the phone. Triple A sucks. Oh, dear. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. What do we got, uh, Jim? He is nuts. He's talking about me, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maria says. Yeah. We drove, we drove like that for years, and now we just take, take your time. No, you don't take my time. You take your time. Um, okay, talking four to five days to get to Texas. <coughs> faster, yeah. is, faster is just crazy. Okay. I've been so many dead deer on the side of the road, I could make a fortune. Okay, you got that because you went out of, you went out of, sequence 300 miles or three dot or three 3 p.m each day that's, whatever yeah, that's, that's what i would typically do yeah that's that's a good yes, good plan. You're, you're 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 crazy we have you're a trip crazy. planned where five hours max between destinations utilizing some harvest hosts okay that's Thank good you, Audrey. jim roy says i can't say much did that the last two weekends in a 73 year old car i love that little buggy that you've been taking around you've been driving that around a lot now, are you, are you displaying that at the shows that you go to, Jim? I imagine that's what people do when they take their classic cars. And you got the old Orchard Beach uh, classic car show coming up next weekend. I think the 16th and 17th, or 15th and uh, 16th. Are you, are you showing at Old Orchard, Jim? Charlie Butler, got a deer on 90 at night. We did that one. Dante, we crazy man. <clears throat> doing that for 40 years and we never hit a deer and we always drive at night. I'm with you, Maria. I'm with you. 
Bob was just in a hurry to get away from John. Thanks, Don. <laughs> John, I never travel either way. My land yacht goes with me. Smart, Jerry. Whatever suits each driver. When I came back to Indiana for open house, I'm going to clock a lot of miles and drive as long as I can. Good. Bob, we used to try the long drives, but now we are done with it. John, I never travel either, either way. My land yacht goes with me. I said with cars or airplanes. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Jerry. The, the first, first town. First town lit by nuclear, nuclear power. power. I don't know. I'm not sure what he's talking about. It would have been a long time ago, that's for sure. The first town lit by nuclear power. Anybody else guess what that might be before Jerry tells us? Because you know he's going to tell us. No, he's he's out checking his fireplace now. Ah, Tony, absolutely. R.I.P. Jimmy Buffett. Been some great testimonials to him. And uh, Kenny Je Chestnut did the uh, ocean song there on the beach of Key West the other day. They had a, a parade down Key West yesterday for Jimmy. Greetings from Kansas City. What the hell are you doing in Kansas City, Doherty? That's interesting, because he's going to be doing seven hours at Hershey also. I think. Pretty sure he is. And Randy Murray. Hey there, all. This is Randy's chance for a couple of days of rest before he uh, gets down there and takes care of the Hershey exhibit for Pete's RV. You know, I'll bet he's got a long, a long week or 10 days in Hershey coming up. Right, Randy? Oh, they sound like Bob and I. Bob's in charge of transportation, and I'm in charge of the rest. Yeah, that's 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 a good plan. That works for me too. Campfire is going. Have a great show. Oh, he's, that's what he's doing. And amen, Jim and Susan. That's when they said, "Do it now." Yep, no question. Wow, what a great trip. Yeah. Toronto's never guaranteed. I totally agree. Just do it. Spent four weeks in South Dakota. And four weeks? Wow. What are you doing? Applying for a job with Christy Gnomes? Come on. That's a long <laughs> time. <coughs> Hit me like a ton of bricks. I still haven't been able to really listen Buffett. to it. Oh, Jimmy Buffett. What a great guy. Lots of people I know actually knew Jimmy. He was apparently very cordial to everybody. Some of the stories are fantastic. Several motorhomes to Buffett concerts. So sad. I followed him since it came out on a reel to reel. <laughs> <coughs> oh, wow, what's my throat tonight? We brought several. Okay, that's sad. And Jim Conboy. Run, run into the screw issue every day, which is why we remote and changed out every screw specific into its application. I've seen you post that before, Jim. Yep. Seventh, yeah. Remove them. Tony, so you're saying <coughs> new RV is screwed up. Not necessarily. Well, Mr. Cyrus, Hawkey is not setting up. He's playing golf. LOL. See you next week, Kevin. <laughs> a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, what do you call it? Um, shop yes. talk. Little, little jealousy, little shop talk. Shop talk, yeah. <clears throat> and um, who's in the Winnebago display? I just communicated with some. Who was it? Uh, I can't remember. Wait, Dwayne, who's the influencers that are going to be in your display? I saw something go across the board yesterday on that. Went to the show in Rhode Island. And to Montreal may hit the OOB. <coughs> I want to take over take over a couple of comments while I get rid of this cough, John. Okay. Tony says, Oh yeah. <coughs> Wish I had been in Key West. I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan. Chris Daria says he's training at the Cummins Power Generation in Kansas City. Okay. Susan says, Arco, Idaho, just like Jim's shirt. Okay. Peggy says, that works for us too, I plan, and Tony drives. Don says, we left our motorhome in Texas, and we will hurry to get back to save on hotels. 
Oh, they, they're up here without the motorhome. Hmm. Dwayne doesn't know who the person is. So um, they'll have people there. And, you know, one of the things that you need to keep in mind, folks, is that if you've got an issue with your RV, a lot of times we have factory people watching this show and they would call Bob or I after and say, hey, have that person uh, get to me directly. So um, we're, we, we don't want to get involved in too much stuff, but if you have a major issue, we'll try to help you out as much as we can. Now, the other thing that um, I have a question to you all is, are you planning on anything this weekend RV wise based upon the weather forecast in New England? Or were you going to kind of, uh, you know, do the soccer games and the football games thing? Are you, are you staying out um, longer in the RV? Because uh, I was going to say, now that you don't need the air conditioner to fall asleep, although you probably do. Uh, <laughs> people love, you know, they, there's flea markets everywhere now. There's, there's county fairs, there's town fairs, there's um, farmers, farmers markets all over. The all place. those things, all over the place. So, anybody going anywhere exciting this weekend that they're going to share with us, and uh, we'll be happy to let others know about it. So, tell us that as well. And um, we did, um, you know, as work between Hershey and Open House, going to Acadia. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, giant. Oh, okay. Who's hey, going? hey, Dwayne, 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 before you go up there, call me because if you're going to go into Bahaba, there's this, there's this um, electric car that you can rent called Acadia Gem. And if you know the specific date you're going to be there, if I still have the manager's number, I'll call him. He said, if you have any friends and they're there for two, they're, they're made by skidoo or polaris one of those companies but they're electric and you can drive all through acadia with them we we did it back in june i think it was and um it's a pretty cool thing so if you if you well, have we, that um, okay so he's saying between hershey, <clears throat> between hershey and open house yeah yep yep there's that one week um and now they charge to park rvs down at the at the little park which they didn't used to. Now they do. So, at Acadia. Yeah. No, at um, down at Bar Harbor on the main street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, most people just park them on the street or wherever. And the most. Yeah. Well, you're not going to park down down by the the busy town part. No, by the park. No, yeah. That's a nice walk. <laughs> Chris, are you are you flying back and then driving down? You must be doing that unless. <laughs> Chris, do you have your RV with you in Kansas City? Maybe you dropped it off in Hershey. Oh, it's Solus. Okay. Counts as a van. Okay. Jim Conboy. Yes, we'll be at State Line this weekend. Halo's Wish next week at Normandy. Then Charlie Brown's and back <laughs> to Ron's. Wow. Hey, you are rocking. Rocking. I'm so, I'm so happy to see that. What's Charlie Chris, Brown? Chris wrote yes and no, but I don't know what the questions were. Chris, are you flying back and then driving to Hershey? I, th I think that's what Yeah, and I think he said no to me, saying he may have left the unit at uh, Hershey and flew out, I think. Oh, uh, flew, flew out from Philadelphia. Where's Charlie Brown? Do you, do you know, John, for Jim Convoy there? I think it's in Connecticut. Is that a campground? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, right? Just got back from eight days at Greenwood Lodge campsites in Bennington. Bennington, Vermont? Sounds like it. Well, he, goes, he goes up to Vermont, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but then did he fly to Kansas City from Vermont? Or did he go back? I bet you he went to Bradley. Yeah, I Bradley. don't know. It's, it's a, either way, Chris, we got to get together for, for one night at least in, um, in Hershey. Um, yeah. And Dwayne, same thing. You can take us out whenever you want. That, that Horky isn't. Uh, taking my solace. Okay, counts as a van, convoy. So, hey, question. Um, let me tell I did a, a report or interview with David Kors, who has a, a show called Glamping USA Americas. It's a trade show, 
And the interview was very interesting because it's all about the glamping industry and its manufacturers, its suppliers, and they have all these structures. But you say they got people from like 40 different countries coming around. And the audience for this show is about one third investors who are building our own glamping resorts, one third people who own regular camp campgrounds and thinking about adding glamping facilities. And one third are people who are looking to invest in a glamping uh, thing. They, they have workshops, they have uh, financial people coming out, tell them how to finance. So if you ever thought about building out or owning a glamping facility in this, you know, there's a lot of us users that uh, camp for years and years and then say, you know what? It would probably be a lot of fun to own a campground or a glamping facility. Well, it is fun, but it's an awful lot of work. And this is the only show of its kind for people who are thinking about glamping resorts. However, let's be perfectly clear here, Bob. <laughs> so many people have said, oh, when I retire, I'd love to own a campground. Right. <clears throat> they are in for what is known as a rude awakening. Because with a campground, you don't work 40 hours a week, 80 hours a week. You work 168 hours a week because you're always working. Okay, And it's not it's, it's just not something you want to do when you think you want to retire. Right, right. right. Because, oh, that looks, you know, we love camping, so it would be so yeah, much fun we, to own yeah, a camp. You know, all those people every day say hello, smile. <laughs> it's it's a little different. So, so if you were thinking about doing it and – Maybe you should go to the Glamping USA America show and and sit and listen because they're, it's it's an interesting industry. And it's very interesting when you, when you consider that the economy is a little bit slow. RV sales are back to normal routines. Uh, campgrounds are doing well still. But this show is taken up. It's almost double the size of what it was last year. And like I say, people come from all over the world and all over America to get their education on Glamping USA. <coughs> Do that. Cool. Cool. Couple so, of, and a couple um, of comments. A lot of good things coming up and um, great audience. You know what? Yeah. Great. You know, it, it's so nice to be able to uh, just Spend keep that, reading, yeah. reading comments, let our audience have our audience tell everybody, you know, what they think because our audience are campers. You well, know, these these, these like, are these are the most fun shows that we do, where we can banter back and forth. Yeah, with the, and it shows. I mean, our attendance tonight is, is way up there. People really enjoy it, and we appreciate your comments. So, Don Haas says owning a campground is a lot of work and hassle. Well, every job is, but you know, hopefully, some parts of it are fun. Audrey says, John DePietro, I echoed your comment on owning a campground in in retirement. Yeah, that's that's not the thing I'd want to do in retirement. Especially, no. you know, what what amazes me though is that people who have camps all their life, who have spent a lot of time in campgrounds, who have seen the issues and the problems that come up with different neighbors and RVs and and the the changing demographics of it, I'm I'm not sure I'd want to own a campground right now. Well, you know. On that changing demographics thing, um, we had a long conversation. Uh, you had him on one day, I had him on another day, but it was the same topic um, about the new camper that has come onto the scene since 2020 with COVID. And uh, the person I'm referring to is ba uh, Galen Bailey. <clears throat> and yeah. um, he said there were plenty of people that came in in the summer of 2020 that we kind of had to uh, let them know that quiet hours existed because they thought a campground was like, you know, a hotel room. You could raise as much noise as you want all night long. And, um, you know, the old orchard police department yeah. uh, or Scarborough, whoever, <laughs> yeah, Scarborough or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So they thought it was party. They thought it was party central. They thought it was party central. And he said, you know, once you tell them they're all nice people, um, especially the ones that came up and rented, it was a little bit different demographic than the ones who came up and owned their own unit because they were a little less aware of their surroundings. Well, so, you know, I, I posted this week, a po I, I shared a post from Normandy Farms this week, which was a little bit disturbing. The, the post was fantastic, but Normandy Farms had a couple of glamping sites free up. 
for yep. Labor Day weekend. So we shared yep. it on, on our nerves of site. And it was three nights. It was going to be $956 on a calamity site. Well, the amount of negative comments was overwhelming. And I don't know if it happened when they posted it on the Normandy Farm site itself, but people complaining about the price. And I think one of the disparities that we have in the outdoor hospitality industry is the people don't reflect what happens in the indoor hospitality industry. There are many there are there are hotels in Port downtown Portland, Maine that charge eight hundred bucks a night for a hotel room. For now, two people, also yeah, there are maybe four, a hundred yeah, a hundred dollar night hotel rooms. So there is nothing wrong with three nights for a thousand dollars in a glamping site if that's what the marketplace will draw. If you don't want to spend a thousand dollars for three nights, then don't. But go, there are a ton of ca- private campgrounds that people say, well, I can't find sites. Well, that's because you're trying to find the site at the most popular campground in the most popular destination on where you want to be on a specific date. But there are plenty of private campgrounds that you can still get for under $100 a night. And that's why KOA you know, spread their uh, units apart. They got journey, they got holiday, they got destination, different pricing. But I was totally amazed at the number of negative comments. And my assessment of it is those are the new COVID campers, that they have not been camping all their life. They have not, that, that they don't understand the difference between $100 a night for a campground and 1000 So am I all wet or would somebody else interpret that the same way? I thought it was a sign of you know, some discomfort with the camping industry, but perhaps from people who have not been camping a long time. Those those people are trolls. That's a good point, Steve. You know, it it, it was really strange. Uh, Susan says wow, we, had, we had lots of sites for fifty or sixty dollars a night with hookups. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's great. wow. Yeah, and they have a big unit. I think what do you say, thirty eight foot? Uh, yeah, thirty eight foot on the Jayco. Yeah, yeah, and uh, then you add your your toad onto that, and you're right. you're fifty it's feet long. Twenty feet, so you got fifty five, sixty feet. Uh, we've been involved in campground management for 20 years. It is a lot of work, but a lot of reward. Okay. And, oops, what did I do? I thought I wanted that one. Not you're going the wrong way. Oh, heck would you come? Going the wrong way, yeah. That's it. Yep. A lot of sites for $50, $60 a night with hookups. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Some with, some with work camping opportunities, if this is not what you are looking for, that doesn't mean it doesn't work for some people. That's a great point, Don. You know, you know, some people want to go to campground. They, they've worked all of their entire career, and, and they don't want to work anymore, so they're not going to take advantage of the work camper opportunities. While others say, well, you know, it's a good way to subsidize our travel, uh, get the free site, get some hours in under your belt, pay for your travel expenses. Each, everybody is different. And as Audrey says, Normandy is a great campground with incredible amenities. They even offer dog sitting. Right, they got dog sitting, they got massages, they got yep. you know, spas. They, they got, got uh, at least three or four pools. Yeah, motor, uh, that lodge, a remote control, Nine. car track. I mean, you know, it's you're not going to get that at some other campgrounds, but that isn't for every camper. So if you're rustic, I mean, I, I point people to uh, one that we were permanent at for uh, a seasonal site up in uh, Scarborough, Maine, the uh, Wild Duck Campground, before I went over to uh, Seacoast Resort. They only had 55 sites. They had absolutely no amenities. There was no pools. There was nothing to do. You could rent a kayak. You could rent a canoe if you wanted to go down the river. It was very quiet. On July 4th, with every site filled, you didn't hear a sound. And it was less than 100 you No, know, back then it was probably about 50 or 60 bucks a night. So yep. you can find that yeah, I, I, the great thing that we've always said about RVing and, and camping is you can find an RV to fit your budget, whether it's a pop-up or a 45-foot diesel pusher. You can find a campground, whether it's a rustic campground in the middle of the woods with no amenities, or you go to Normandy Farms or Bailey's Family Camping Resort and get every every imaginable amenity so that you and your wife or spouse can sit down and the kids can run off and they run off after breakfast and you don't see them until it's dinner time. Yep. And we got one final comment from Dwayne, actually two of them, three of them. Nope. 
Okay, lots of options for folks these days. Many don't choose campgrounds. Hey, whatever you want. The amenities offered come at a price, and they're often very enjoyable, and folks are free to choose. Ambassador Kenny Phillips and Kevin and Patricia McCabe from RV, they're there yet show. Not sure of their schedules. I don't know what that means. That I think it, it may have been Patrice and Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Phillips, Kevin and Patrice McCabe. Yeah, it may have been the McCabes um, that do uh, their television show. I can't think of the name of it right now. What would it cost? cost to an RV with sites for three days more than 900, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. What did Sherry tell us last week? An average uh, motorhome rental would be about $1,700 when you put in all the taxes and everything. <clears throat> you want to budget in, some want the Ritz Carlton. Exactly right. Yeah. Discovery Channel show. RV there yet? Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's Patrice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another great show. Thanks, as always. Thank you. There's a lot to be said for having your bed and your potty and your kitchen and food. Well, and your own beer, too. I knew the beer had to uh, had to be. Look, at we got a flourish here at. A yeah, you're, you're right. Now. Everybody's and Patrice are great. They, I know Winnebago sponsors the show. Campers in RV is one of their sponsors. Also, it's a great show. And they're down here. They're headquartered down here out of Tampa, Florida. Well, all right, we're two minutes over. That means the night is over, and uh, we will catch up to you next week and uh, have some fun stuff for you. Thanks, everyone. You're a great audience tonight, and it was a great Thanks, time. Everybody. Let me uh, run us out of here with – oops, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. I did want – I did want to, right there. Want to thank those there folks go. because they're so nice to us and being our sponsor, and – we will close it out with that. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.